just like quick recap because I know not everybody was here for the notes yesterday. Hopefully everybody at least went home and watched the video, but I know that didn't happen for everybody. So quick recap on one, three. We learned two formulas, which were the midpoint formula and the distance formula. So if you're finding, which both of those you need to know for the quiz tomorrow, okay? You don't get like a formula sheet. So the midpoint formula is when you're finding the coordinates of two point, of a point in between two points, right? Midway between them, which is thus the word midpoint. And to find those, you would find x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. And that answer is going to stay in coordinate point form. So you'll give that answer as a coordinate. If you wanted to like approximate it on a, I'm not going to give you graph paper and you can't use like your own scrap paper, but like if you wanted to draw it out and kind of eyeball it to confirm what you get, that's okay. But obviously you're not going to be able to find a midpoint from a graph. So make sure you know that formula. The second one was the distance formula. And the distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Correct. As long as you're consistent, as long as you pull both twos or both ones, right? You have to be consistent. And those answers are going to be either a perfect square that you actually square root or some sort of square root that is simplified. So if you get a square root that can be simplified or broken down into a factor tree and then simplified, you have to do it. It has to be a simplified fraction. I mean, a, sorry, simplified square root. So you can't leave like square root 25, that becomes 20. And you can't leave, I mean square root 25, that becomes 5, and you can't leave like square root 20, that becomes 2 root 5. So you have to make sure you break it down. So this is like a big, like number like 136. Factor tree. Start with 2. Yep. The other thing we learned was the bisector. What's a bisector? Uh, it, it cuts whatever it is. So it's got to cut a segment, right? So a segment is the only thing that can be bisected. You can't bisect a line or array or a plane. But a bisector would be a segment, or it's going to hit the segment at its midpoint. The bisector could be a line, a ray, a segment, a plane, because it's the one doing the cutting. The thing that is cut in half is the one that has to be a segment. All right, so number one says A, B, bisects C, D at E. If C, E is two and one-fourth, find C, D. If you are a visual person, like I like to draw stuff out, feel free to do it. If I have CD and I have something that bisects it at E, it's going to look like this. It's going to be cut into two congruent parts. If CE is two and one-fourth inch and it wants you to find CD, how do I do it? I can multiply it by two. This would also be two and one-fourth. So you could add two and one fourth and two and one fourth, or you could add, or you could multiply it. What do you get? Four, four and a half. half. Good. So pay attention to what it asks for because if it had asked for E D, that would be two and a fourth. You got to be really careful. We talked about I talked about it yesterday with like the sophomores that like part of the hardest part of geometry is it's wordy. And the instructions might not ask for exactly what you think they're asking for. You want to make sure you really pay attention to them. Number two said point M is the midpoint of XY. Find XM. Oh, this should have been XY. And this is M. Is that like that on yours? No. no. Okay. That's what it should have been. So if it's the midpoint, it cuts it into two congruent segments. What do I do? Good. So 2x plus 7 would equal 8x minus 23. I'd subtract the 2x. I'd add the 23. I get 6x equals 30. Divide both sides by 6. And x is 5. Did the question ask for x? No. No, it's asking for xm. So what do I do with that? Plug it back in. Good. So I'm going to plug it back in. And it doesn't matter, actually, which one you plug it back into because they should be the same. So 2 times 5 plus 7 would be 10 plus 7 or 17. It might also ask you for x, y. So then you double it. So, again, just really pay attention to what it's asking for. And when do you double it? If it said find x, y. 
right? It would be the whole thing. Questions on that one? Okay, number three says point M is the midpoint of PQ with M points P2, negative 6, and Q, negative 8, 0. Find the coordinates of M. So my midpoint, X1. So it doesn't matter which ones you call the ones or the twos as long as you're consistent within the point. X1 would be 2 plus a negative 8 is the X2 divided by 2. And then Y1, negative 6 plus Y2, which is 0, over 2. So I end up with negative 6 over 2, negative 6 over 2, which is negative 3, negative 3. Yesterday we talked about what happens if it's not even. You want to keep it improper. You don't need to even take it to the mixed number form. Just keep it improper. Just make sure it's simplified. That's all. So if it's negative 6 over 2, it needs to be negative 3. Questions on that one? All right, so four is the one that I think, I think is probably the trickiest in this lesson, right? It says the midpoint of GH is four, negative one. One endpoint is five, three. Find the coordinates of the other endpoint. If you want the visual, it'd be G to H. M is in the middle. So I need to find the coordinates of H. I have my X1 and Y1 in G because that's one of the endpoints. And I have the X of my midpoint and I have the Y of the midpoint. What I don't have is the second X and the second Y. So this is where you want to actually take and split them into X's and Y's. So here's my X and here's my Y. X1, which is 5, plus X2, which is what I don't know, over 2 is going to give me the X coordinate of my midpoint, which is 4. Y1, which is 3, plus Y2, which is what I don't know, over 2, is going to give me the Y coordinate of my midpoint, which is negative 1. And then we solve as though they're two separate equations. I'm going to multiply both of these by 2. It cancels from here. 5 plus X2 equals 8. Subtract the 5. X2 is 3. Same on the right side. Multiply both sides by 2. Cancels from here. 3 plus y2 equals negative 2. Subtract the 3. And y2 is negative 5. So the coordinates of my end point are 3, negative 5. Is there a way to like check your answer? Yeah, great question. I could take this end point and this end point and do x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 divided by 2 and make sure it gives me my midpoint. So 5 plus 3 is 8. Divide by 2, that's 4. And then 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. Divided by 2, that's negative 1. Okay. All right, number 5 says, to find the distance between the swing and the sandbox in his backyard, Darren made a graph. Darren is such a nerd, by the way. Who makes a graph of their backyard, right? I have a friend named Darren. <laughs> <laughs> Not that. This is a different Darren. Darren made a graph and found the coordinates of the swing to be 7, 2, and the coordinates of the sandbox to be negative 3, 8. Maybe I'll make that a project. You guys have to turn your backyards into graphs. Find the distance between the swing and the sandbox of the nearest end of the unit. So lots of words when really all it's asking for is what? The distance between those two points. Don't let the words throw you, okay? So I get the square root of... This could be my x1, y1. This could be my x2, y2. Or you could reverse it because it doesn't matter. Negative 3 minus 7 squared plus 8 minus 2 squared. What's negative 3 minus 7? Negative 10. 8 minus 2? 6. And then I get the square root of negative 10 squared. Good. 6 squared? 36. Square root of 136. Not a perfect square, but we're going to break it down into its factors to see if it can get simplified. So I know it's even, which means 2 goes into it. It'd be 88 times, right? Did I do that right? 2? Nope. 68 times. Then 2, 34. Then 2, 17. 17's prime, so I hit the dead end. There are two twos. So one 2 goes to the front, and then the 2 and the 17 both stay underneath. They get multiplied together, which means this is 2 square root 34. You have to simplify your square roots, okay? The good news is you might get partial credit should you do that or should you forget to do that. But 
You can't get full credit if they're not simplified, so you want to make sure they're simplified. Same thing with like fractions. Anything that can be simplified needs to be simplified. Questions? Yeah. For number four, I did something different and I want... And this is my X of my midpoint and this is the Y of my midpoint. So negative four plus X two over two equals negative 13 halves and one plus y2 over 2 equals the y-coordinate, which is negative 6. So then I'm going to multiply 2 on both sides. It cancels on the left, and it also cancels on the right with the denominator. So I end up with negative 4 plus x2 equals negative 13. Add the 4. And x2 equals negative 9. On the right, you're going to multiply by 2 and multiply by 2. The 2's cancel here. 1 plus y2 equals negative 12. Subtract the 1 and y2 equals negative 13. Thirty six said, in baseball, the strike zone is the region a baseball needs to pass through for the umpire to declare it a strike. When the batter does not swing, the top of the strike zone is a horizontal plane passing through the midpoint of the top of the batter's shoulders and the top of the uniform pants when the players in the batting stance. Find the height of T. So it literally says it's the midpoint between these, right? It says it's the midpoint from the top of the batter's box or top of the batter's shoulders and the top of the uniform pants. So this line is from the shoulders and this line is from the uniform pants. You're just looking for the halfway point between those two. So you can either add them, divide by two, or figure out the increment. So I could just do 60 plus 42 divided by two, 102 divided by two, which is 51. Is there a question on the No, there's no word problems on the test. You don't need to know anything about a batter's box tomorrow. What was that? 34. Uh, at the bottom. They are not congruent. One is 5 and one is square root 41. So it's the distance, right? It'd be the square root of 5.4 minus 13 squared plus 3.7 minus 1.6 squared. So the 13, it would be negative, but it's going to be 13 minus 5.4. So 13.0. You have to borrow. So this becomes a 2, 6. I have to borrow, so this becomes a zero, seven. This is 7.6, negative 7.6 squared plus 3.7 minus 1.6 is 2.1. And then I'm going to do 7.6 times 7.6, 45, 42, 49 plus 4, that's 53. And there's two digits behind the decimal place. So 57.76. And then 21 or 2.1 times 21 is 441. Two digits behind the decimal place is 4.41. Underneath the radical. Now we want to add them. And you get the square root of 62.17. Good news is there's not decimals tomorrow. Like, you're not squaring decimals tomorrow. But How many questions? Ten. Ten. Quiz review looks like, right? So remember 1.1 and 1.2 were mostly vocab-based, right? So it's like an image and you have to do stuff. We didn't really start doing arithmetic very much, and we didn't do any algebra until we did the, the last section, okay? So there's a mix. Like, in geometry, you're going to find there's a mix of stuff. So in the beginning, obviously, in 1.1, this was figuring out the difference between lines, rays, segments, that kind of stuff. Um, coplanar, collinear, what those mean. All of that is in 1 1. So if you want to go back to the vocab there, that's all that is. Okay? If I give you a diagram, you've got to be able to tell me a line. You've got to be able to tell me a ray. You've got to be able to tell me a segment. You've got to be able to tell me uh, the name of a plane. You have to tell me the intersection of a plane and a plane or a plane and a line, like that kind of stuff. Okay? What is collinear? Give me collinear points. Give me non-collinear points. Give me coplanar points. Give me non-coplanar points. So that kind of stuff would be in the diagram-based part. And then you're going to see things like, obviously, 11 and 12, where you're trying to figure out if they're congruent. You are going to get a graph on one that you're going to plot the points, and you're going to figure out if the segments are congruent. How do we know if they're congruent? 
What makes two segments congruent? When they're same size. Same size and shape. So if they're same segments, then we're just looking at the lengths, right? If the lengths are the same, they're congruent. If they're not, they're not. Okay. It's about the, obviously congruent. Then you've got your segment addition postulate, right? Where you're either given its parts and you're going to add it together or you're given the whole segment and you're going to take part of it away from it. That's like 13, 14. Okay. 15, 16, 17 is the distance between points. 18 is talking about the bisector. 19 is the midpoint. And then 20 is a word problem that you could totally skip because it's not going to be anything like you're going to see on your quiz. Okay. The 21 is using that graph. So it's good practice because there are coordinates on there. So that's like a graph. Obviously, you can see points that are graphed on a coordinate grid. Or you could be asked to graph the points in the coordinate grid and then answer questions based on it. Questions? Uh, yeah. Maybe like one question has like A, B, C, D. No. B. Not tomorrow. No. Like, does it have a multi-part in one question? No. Is it multiple choice? It is not multiple choice. That won't happen very often in here at all. Oh, well, yeah. I was like, plan out to take that, but yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, the ones that require work. Like, so if you're just saying if something is congruent and you can count it, no. But if you're finding the distance formula, I expect to see work for the distance formula. Yeah. What?